afternoon or good evening. This is Pamela and you are watching Pam Entertainment TV where we review movies, television series, and incidents in pop culture just to see how that incident may affect our daily lives. I'm excited y'all. I didn't realize that my show, Our Kind of People, was on. I thought it was coming back next week but it came back this week. So right after the Thanksgiving break. So I almost missed it. Let me get situated. I almost missed my little show that I'm going to stick the side to the end of the season. Almost missed my show. So here we are, Our Kind of People, Season 1, Episode 8. And the episode is entitled, Sister Vention. So we're just going to do a little recap. Uh, last, The last time we left our little Franklin family, Franklin and DuPont family, Teddy Franklin was in the hospital. He had had a massive heart attack, had to get open heart surgery. Uh, he had, uh, he went to go see the ancestors and his brother came to him, uh, talking to him about, uh, who he is and all of those, all of those want, well, not really wonderful things, but he was talking to him about making sure that he leave a good legacy, uh, reconciling with the past and all of those different things. Uh, so he was going back and forth into the ancestors. Leah, uh, found out that Raymond was the one that since sent Alex, the reporter, uh, to investigate Franklin Holdings and what she found and what she told the world, what Alex told the world was that Teddy had Parkinson's degree disease. They were trying to keep that within the family, but now everyone knows. Child, we had a Solange, Beyonce, and Jay-Z moment. <laughs> In the elevator uh, with uh, Angela, Leia, and Raymond. And Angela put them hands on Raymond. Lee Daniels. You know I'm still... You could have you could have had them fight someplace else now. You could have had them fight someplace else now. That didn't make no sense to copy Beyonce, uh, Jay-Z, and uh, Solange. You know Jay-Z probably in therapy behind that. Fooling around with that dog on Solange. But anyway, we had that. Uh, we have Tyreek finding out that his father committed suicide. We're having Nate uh, come into the picture and meet Nikki. We see Aunt Piggy done, done, done jump ship, baby. Baby, when things got a little too tight in regards to um, the episode before last, you remember that Teddy talked to Aunt Piggy about loyalties and how the people were there were loyal to him, but ain't nobody loyal to Aunt Piggy, child. So Aunt um, Piggy got scared and hightailed her tail back to Boston, honey, on the first thing smoking. I think she took the Greyhound, the Amtrak, whatever it was. Aunt um, Piggy left there so quick it made your head spin because Tyreek was asking her questions. And she was lying about knowing, um, ooh, I can't think of the man's name right now, but the man that she ended up killing. Because Tyreek was trying to find that man to get answers about his father killing himself. All right? So that's pretty much a recap of uh what's been going on so far and like i told y'all i'm gonna stick beside this it got a little interesting so here we are we open up the sh we open it up with tyreek and angela getting busy and, and 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 congratulating themselves for a job well done in the bedroom child she rubbing up on her lance gross Ooh, child tyreek by gosh anyway they're having a little conversation, and she's asking him how he feels about finding out that his father commits suicide. Tariq is not really talking. He's just like, you know, I'm okay. I'm going to do all right. And so Angela is opening it up like, hey, if you want to talk, hey, we can talk. You know, I'm here for you. We're going to, you know, we can talk. So Tariq was like, okay, thanks a lot, whatever. The episode moves on, um, and I will tell you, I'm not going in order of the episode. I'm just going to hit those highlights. So uh, I may jump around, and just because it's coming to me, um, it get it jumps in. Uh, we find out that uh, it is Teddy's birthday, and Teddy has this major party that's going to happen. So Angela goes to the office, and uh, she sees Teddy, and Teddy is very happy to see her. I'm still unsure if they have um, softened like with, with, with Teddy's recent uh, health scare. He seems to have softened uh, uh, for Angela, which looks sounds good. I think his ire is going to be on Aunt Piggy because I believe Aunt Piggy is going to unearth some things or tell 
Angela or give her version of things that have happened. And Teddy's not going to like it, but I'm forecasting. Let's get back to what we're talking about right now. When Angela walks in to, uh, when Teddy invites Angela into the office, she sees that he is buying a painting. Uh, and he explains that that painting is a, a painting that was in his family. It was his brother's favorite painting. And then when his brother was killed, his father uh, sold the painting. So he wants to get it back in the um he wants to get it back into the family. Uh, Angela tells uh, Teddy that Tyreek is not doing good because he's found out that his father has uh, committed suicide. That is something that has just shook him. Teddy invites Tyreek over. Tyreek uh, apologizes for um, his part in him having a, a, a heart attack. Teddy says, no, you were finding out about your father and I lied to you about your father. And it's all it's all well and good. They hug it out. He tells T uh, Tyreek that he wants him to bid on the stadium contract. And he says if he pr presents a, a good presentation, he is going to then say that, hey, he is going to be the one to do the stadium. Uh, Nikki is uh, spending a little time with her father, which she needs. She's a little ambival ambivalent about it, but she's, you know, she's, She's ready to spend some time with them, you know. She's ready to, to to get him out in the world and and to show him all the stuff that she knows and things like that, which was cute. It was cute to see her with her dad and Nate looked good with his with, with his newfound uh little curls and stuff like that. He looked good. Child, we get to Raymond and Leia. Now you know Raymond blew up everything, bringing Alex over there, and Alex uh uh has told everybody that um. Teddy has uh, Parkinson's, and they, like I said, they were trying to keep that little, uh, they were trying to keep that little information within the family, but now it's out. The, the board is quite nervous about what's the future of uh, Franklin Holdings. Leah is, uh, I think, poised to take over, but I think, you know, with Teddy being so strong and doing all the things he needed to do as far as to keep that company afloat, I believe the board is just a little fickle, and I don't know if Leia has done enough to prove herself as a viable CEO. Because you all remember back, uh, you remember she had taken the reins from her father. She was running it for maybe like two months, not even that long. And then he took it back from her. So I'm not sure whether or not uh, how they feel about that. Um, yeah, I guess they could kind of chalk it up as to, hey, I was doing what I needed to do for my father. My father is now back. But they can't make that excuse anymore because Teddy is still on bed rest and he has not been cleared um, to take over the company yet. So we'll see how that goes. But baby, let's get back to Raymond. Raymond done walked up in the house and he said, you, this is my family. Y'all my family. I'm only going to be gone for a, a couple of weeks, but I'm coming back. Leia was like, well, you have just destroyed this family and all this other stuff. And he was like, well, y'all were lying to me. You, you knew about, there is this LLC company. And I didn't write it down. Um, let me see if I did. No. There's this LLC company uh, that is uh, run, I guess, running the day-to-day -day operations of Darman. And I think that's that company that um, Teddy is using to do some illicit things with. He's paying out things and stuff like that through that LLC, which is under Darman or over Darman. I, I, I really um, haven't gotten all, I, I don't understand that information just of yet. So, um, honey, the, 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 the married couple is still fighting. Uh, both of them have just decided to push their heels down. Like you lied to me. No, you lied to me. You know, Raymond is like, you lied to me about the company. and You knew he was keeping the company. He wasn't going to give the company back. Leia's like, well, you lied to me because you knew, uh, why Alex was here and how Alex destroyed our family and told my father's business and all this other stuff. So, you know, they fighting child. Um, you see old Alex on the television screen. Um, I don't know if she's CNN, BNN, uh, whatever the, <laughs> the news network she's on, but she is reporting that because everyone has found out that, um, uh, Teddy Franklin is, you know, he's not at the reins right now that he's sick, that, uh, the stock has plummeted, 
uh, well, it hasn't plummeted. It just has gone down because he's not at the helm. And so the stock stock market is a little unsure about the holdings and things like that. So he tells, he Teddy tells Leia that she needs to go into office and she needs to work in his absence and do what she needs to do. He She needs to get the... Um, the stadium project off the off and running. So he holds that to be the job that she needs to do. Um Raymond um goes to his business partner um and his name is Jack. I forgot because Jack if you remember Jack, Jack is the white man that was kissing up on Leia uh at the um cotillion at the end of cotillion and that's who Lauren saw kissing her mom. Uh, <clears throat> there's a little bit of thing about Lauren at the end of the thing, but I'll get to it. Come on, I'm trying to stick beside it. I'm trying to stick beside it and not rush Michelle. Um, Leia is pretty much in her feelings. Angela comes to the office and Leia has just got out of a, 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 a meeting with the staff and uh, she she's in her feelings about a lot of things. So Angela takes her out on a sister vention which is the title of the episode. They get around the pool at the at the hotel, the prominent hotel there, and uh, they exchange information. They're being all sisterly. You know, uh, Angela tells um, Leia that... Um, she, te- she confides in Leia that Tyreek is acting a little funny, and Leia tells her, you know, you got to let him be, just let him talk when he gets ready. But, you know, Angela's like, well, you know, I want to try to help out. I want to do what I can. And Leia tells her, you know, just hold on, hold off. He will talk to you when he's ready. Uh, Leia confides that her marriage with Raymond is, you know, on the rocks. And uh, they were going to continue to talk, but they ran out of drinks. So Angela got up to go get some drinks. (laughs) Leia said, hey, you realize they'll come to us. But in Angela's absence, here comes old Jack just sashaying all over to the pool, on the side of the pool, over there to where uh, Leia is. And, I mean, he's laying it on thick. Oh, you're so pretty. da 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 He gives her the bungalow key. She looks at, like, what you think I'm going to do with this? And he was like, well, you know, my bun- you know, I'm staying in the bungalow until my house gets renovated. So, um, you can definitely slide on through, baby. <laughs> it looked like Leia was giving that a little consideration because she made a little mention that, you know, she paid two thousand dollars a week for her trainer. So, uh, baby, <laughs> Leia is really trying to consider that uh, uh, old Jack, old Jack in the box. Old Jack's trying to get the box is what his name is. That's what we gonna call him, Jack, trying to get the box. But as we move on, as we move on, uh. Raymond goes to the business partner because he wants him to sign off on the papers to do an audit. And he was saying that uh, the lo- there was a loophole with them uh, purchasing with um, Franklin Holdings taking over Darman that they can audit the books. And that's what he wants to do. But he wants Jack to sign off on the paper. So Jack was like, well, I'm going to wait uh, and let my lawyers look over the paperwork. And he and uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Raymond was like, okay, fine. Because, he, you know, Raymond's starting to get a little feeling that uh, Jack is not really interested in, in being in the company anymore. And pretty much Jack says it. He's like, shoot, Franklin bought us out. We have all of this money. Uh, Jack is like, I'm, I'm, I'm good about just chilling on, on, on Franklin Holden's dime. And, and, you know, we getting the same salary and we ain't doing nothing. I'm really, I'm really liking this little setup, so. That's old Jack for you, but watch out for Jack, because Jack a little sneaky, y'all. Jack a little sneaky, but we're going to keep going. Like I said, I'm sticking beside this. I need to slow down. Let me slow down. <clears throat> so then we get to Quincy and Lauren. Now, we hadn't seen too much of Quincy. Honey, Quincy, once he realized that Nikki was his cousin, baby, we ain't seen no more Quincy. We ain't seen no more Quincy. But Quincy was a little bit more prominent in this episode. Uh, apparently Quincy has been working at Darman doing an internship. He comes across, uh, this young lady comes across, her name is Sloan. I found out later that Sloan is the daughter of the head of the household 
um, what do they call them? They don't call them butlers and what do they call them? I'll, I'll get the name in it and I may put it down. I can't think of what they call it, but Sloan, but the, the lady who's ahead of the staff, that's Sloan's mama. And, uh, uh, Sloan has talked, was talking to Quincy about, I thought, you know, he was blah, 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 slow down. You know, I'm sticking beside this show, so I got to slow down. Sloan asked Quincy, you know, how he was spending his summer. And Quincy told her that he was doing an internship at Darman. And she was like, well, what happened to your hopes and dreams of playing basketball? He says, I do want to do that, but my father would like for me to do the internship. And she kind of just reminds him that, hey, you've had a dream of playing basketball, uh, going to school and playing basketball, or, or going to college and play basketball, uh, that you had those those kind of aspirations and, you know, not, not to deflect from that. <clears throat> Uh, Lauren, we see Lauren and Lauren is just basically, uh, eyeing her mom and her father and how their relationship is starting to, uh, erode a little bit. And she's worried about that. Cause you know, Lauren is a daddy's girl and she wants to make sure that her dad is, um, okay. I just thought about something. Never mind. Never mind. I'm gonna stick beside this show. I'm gonna stick beside what they give us. I'm gonna stick beside what they give us. So then we um <clears throat> we get to old Teddy. So like I told y'all, some of it's in order, and most of it, I the way I have it written down is that I don't know if you can see that or not. Ugh, you can't see my notes. But I just write the main characters' names, and then I just keep going about talking about what's going on. But really, with Teddy, um, basically, Ray, uh, t uh, I don't know if Raymond calls Teddy or Teddy calls Raymond. Teddy calls Raymond. He tells him that he knows that he's trying to audit his uh, books, and he's uh, he's upset with how how it all went down with Alex and all of that. And so Raymond is unapologetic about it, and Teddy just basically tells him, you know, had you just gone on before, I may have considered giving you the company back, but now I'm not thinking about it. And Raymond's like, you know, he seems like from hell to high water, I'm going to get my company back. So they have their little banter back and forth. And so, what we see then, it goes to uh, Nate walking with uh, Nikki. They're out. He comes over to pick her up to go shopping um, because he needs an outfit for Teddy's party. Because remember I told you early, it's Teddy's birthday and Teddy has this big old huge uh, party that he's planning. And he has invited Nate and Nate is saying that he wants to get an outfit to go to this party. While he's out with Nikki... Um, he hears the police siren, he sees the police, and he has a full-on PTSD attack. Uh, he, uh, he tells Nikki, he gives her the number for Teddy's lawyers. Uh, he's just kind of frozen again. He's having a PTSD attack. Nikki doesn't know what she's supposed to do with that. She's trying to talk to him, and it ends up the police weren't there for them. He, the police actually go, and they go on the pier because something has happened on the pier. And, but all of that has freaked Nate out. Um, and Nikki doesn't know what to do with that. She, you know, she's trying to, uh, be strong, but she doesn't know what to do with that. Um, I will go back to, because partly, uh, as the, uh, as the show began, they had a little caption on there about strong black women, uh, the, the strong black women myth or trope. And so, as we started seeing in the episode, I started noticing a little different things about that trope. And one of the things that came up uh, was vulnerability. That as black women, we want to be strong, uh, and we will do that because we, you know, most of us have had feelings at times that there is nobody there to assist us or to help us. So we think that we're supposed to be so strong. And then when we do need help, we don't know how to express that and that, that nobody comes to help you in the sense because they think, oh, well, you're so strong, you don't need help. Even when you ask for help, they're like, well, you, you got it, girl. Don't worry about it. You can do it, girl. You're a strong black woman. You know how to get it, but you're asking for help and how to get past that, how to show your vulnerability, even though you know that you've got to be strong to do certain things, you still need to have a little vulnerability and, and be able to ask for help and say it in a way that it is meant that you, you need help. And, and, you know, 
and make sure that people know, no, 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 no. I know that I can do this, but right now I need some help with this. Are you able to assist me? And then if they're not able, you just keep kind of moving. But that was just a little theme and a trope in this thing because we saw that with uh, Leia being vulnerable to Angela about, you know, something's wrong with her marriage and she's trying to do things. And Angela pretty much basically tells her, uh, this was back at the pool when they was inside the pool before uh, Jack trying to get in Leia's box came up and uh, kind of put a kibosh on it. But she was just trying to explain to her that we need to do that. Angela admits that she's the same way, but that's what she saw. Her mother trying to be strong, but she never did see her mother in her vulnerable states. And she thought, uh, I probably could have learned a lot more knowing how my mother was vulnerable in things. But I just, she always showed me that she was never scared. And I just assumed that I was supposed to be never scared. But we'll we'll continue on. Um, Tyreek, uh, uh, well, I talked about that already, about Tyreek apologizing to Teddy for what happened with his heart attack. Um, Leah and Raymond, everybody's getting ready for Big Teddy's big birthday bash. Hey, Teddy's birthday bash. Hey. And so Leah and Raymond are getting together. They're not really, really talking, but they're just getting ready for the party. Some kind of way Raymond hits uh, Leah's purse. It falls to the full floor. And child, Jack's little bungalow key done came, flew out of there. And so she scurries and picks it up and makes sure she gets it all together and she gets it right back in her purse. Don't know if if, if Raymond saw it. He didn't give me the impression that he saw it. So uh, she just kind of took a took a um, a breather from that. Let's see. Let's see. So now we are at Teddy Shindig. Now Teddy has like a Harlem Renaissance uh, Cotton Club theme party, and apparently one of uh, Teddy's favorite dances, or, or he loves the era. He loves the Harlem Renaissance. He loves the era. And as we go back, you remember I told you that he bought a painting that was uh, painted by someone uh, during that time period. He bought a painting, and so now. Uh, uh, they're having that party, and everybody looks good. They're dancing. Everybody's got on their uh, Cotton Club 1930s, 20s, and 30s, and 40s uh, outfits on. They all look good. Tyreek has a zoot suit on. Uh, Teddy has a little bowler hat. Uh, Angela looks good. You know, uh, Lauren looks good with all those wonderful waves in her hair. And then she has, like, a little diamond crust all through the way. It, child, honey. They was looking good. They was looking good. They were looking good. Um, they have the party, and then there was a nice little dance number. So all the family members uh, learned how to do the Lindy Hop so they can dance with um, with Teddy. They were all having a good time. Uh, Tyreek, when Tyreek comes into the party, Angela again reassures him that uh, she uh, is willing to uh party i mean to talk with him uh tyreek just gets all i don't know what it is tyreek gets all sensitive and he is just like angry uh let me go back to because one of the things let me go back because you remember when teddy and uh, tyreek had a nice little uh hug, they hugged it out and apologized to each other the one thing that teddy told him which was very important, which I thought was, which was, I thought was a very good uh, piece of advice is that Teddy told him, he says, uh, you don't have time to get lost in your emotions and lost in your feelings. You need to deal with it. And then you need to deal with that and then, you know, work with it. So he didn't tell him to ignore it, but he was making sure he says, don't get bogged down and don't get lost in them. He says, because me and your mother were trying to protect you. And we see now that that was a, a, a bad thing because now you're having um, different <clears throat> where he could have. He's dealt with his father's death, but now he's gotten this new information about his father has killed himself. So there's a whole lot of different things that Tyreek is going through. And instead of him being able to express those things, he's kind of turned within. And that's what's happening when he comes up on Angela. He's kind of upset with her for, for her continually being supportive. She sees it that she's being supportive. Uh, Tyreek looks at it like you in my business woman and I need for you to stop. And so he kind of, he kind of gets gruff with her 
And, you know, she kind of pulls back. But Nate comes over and he sees that she's being gruff with her and everything like that. Uh, she tells him that she's okay. And that's when Nate confided into her about what happened on the pier. She says that Nikki didn't tell her about that. And he was saying, well, I thought maybe I scared her. He said, you know, because I was afraid, da 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 They talk it out. Um... Raymond, uh, just to really kind of wrap all of this up, <clears throat> Quincy goes to Sloane's room, Sloane's mama's, uh, to talk to Sloane, Sloane's mama's like, you need to go on back over there to the, uh, uh, resident side, don't be over here in, in the, uh, the staff quarters, cause you're not finna come over here and be around my child and talk to her like that, so she pretty much gave Quincy a good talking to, um, Lauren talks to her mom and basically tells her, look, I know that you and dad are having issues. Uh, Leia tells Lauren, you know, we're going to get it right. She was, but Leia was, L Lauren was telling her mother, look, we're in a good place. And I don't, just because I'm a daddy's girl doesn't mean that I'm not concerned about you in this situation. And I just want to let you know that I love you and I'm, you know, and I'm concerned about you in the situation and they hug it out. Um, Raymond goes to old, old, old Jack want Leia the boxes room to, uh, to talk with him and it was so strange because he was like come in that's why i gave you a key but see he thought it was leia but it wasn't leia it was raymond so raymond comes in and wants to know if he signed the papers and that's when uh jack that wants leia box tells raymond that he's talked to teddy he has sold his shares in the company to Teddy. So he is basically out of the situation. He's out of, uh, out of Darman. And that uh, any problems that uh, Raymond has, he needs to take it up with Teddy. And so Raymond was like, you know what? I thought, you know, I thought something's wrong. You're a snake. I don't know why you're acting like this. Blah, blah, blah. Hold on, y'all. How about old Jack that wants Leia's box going to sit up there and tell Raymond, well, you know, I know that you and Leia are on the outs, but if you don't want her, I'll be more than happy to take her off your hands. What? Where did he do that at? And he was so bold with it. Boy, Raymond beat him down to the ground. Beat him down to the ground. How are you going to sit up there and tell a man that you're going to sit? Ooh, baby. Uh, I, it triggered me, honey. I, all this, all this got hot. All this got hot. Back started just spazzing and hurting. It got hot. Because I'm like, how in the world do you think you're going to sit up here and tell somebody that you're going to want their wife? And you, and I mean, just as calm and bold, what, uh, Raymond beat him down to the ground. I guess he thought that because Teddy has, uh, uh, Teddy proverbially has Raymond by the balls. I guess he thought he can come up here. I guess he thought he was weak. And he could come in there and tell him some mess like that. But Raymond beat him down and told him, you know what? I'm through with you. I'm through with your family. Don't come near mine. Or it's going to be some problems. Um, Angela talks to Nikki. And uh, Angela lets Nikki know that she knows that Nate had a situation because Nate told her. And she reminded Nikki that, you know, you don't have to be strong. I know uh, Angela told Nikki that she knew that her and Mama Eve portrayed this strong black woman trope. But she gave her permission to be vulnerable. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to know it all. Because you're, you're a teenager. You're, you're, you're a child. You don't know everything. And it's okay to want and need help and to ask for help. So they have concocted that they want Nate to move in with them so that Nikki can, can have more time with her father and uh, whatnot. Great. So uh, Angela tells Nate that he wants, she wants him to move in. First, Nate says, you know, I don't want any charity. She's like, no. She says, we are raising a child. You want to be able to have the ability to be here for Nikki. Nikki needs us. It's best if you're here. Nate accepts, but he did tell Angela, you're going to have to let me be her father. She accepts. Then old Tyreek comes in. Now, Tyreek is, is, is five sheets to the wind. He's drunk and he's angry. He sees Nate and he gets mad because, well, well, he walks in on Angela and Nate hugging it out. But Angela tries to smooth it out and let him know that everything's okay, but he doesn't. He's a little, he's angry and he's acting like he's jealous. 
uh, he's he's kind of putting his fingers in Angela's face, just being, ooh, just ooh, just being ugly and mean and drunk. So uh, he calls himself trying to fight Nate. Nate's like, hey, you want you want some of this? I can give you some of this. And then Tyreek's like, well, I don't think it's worth it. So I don't know if he's broken up with Angela. I don't know exactly what has happened. But that was the end of the show. It was a lot of information given. But like I said, it was it was good tonight. I had I had thought that it wasn't coming back to next week. But that was Queens. Queens comes next week. And this one came back this week. So. Like I've told y'all before, I'm going to stick beside it. Uh, it's, it's, it's getting, it's getting better. I don't know if they've renewed it for next season or not, but it's, it's moving along. It's the plot has solidified. Uh, we're seeing some things go on. <clears throat> we're getting to know the characters, uh, a lot more of the characters. I can tell you, I was very excited well, not excited, but I was very glad to see Quincy because, honey, you know, I thought that they had just basically sent Quincy upstairs and he was gone for the show. But he's he's here. So it looks like that he is going to have some kind of storyline with Sloan, who is the. Um, the house manager, who is the house manager's uh, daughter or granddaughter, I'm not really sure. Um, let's see what else. You know, they didn't show my, they, they didn't show Taylor this week. I was so glad because, you know, I don't, I don't like that Taylor like that. She messy to me, but we didn't see Taylor. So, and we didn't get any more information about the history of the drug selling back in the eighties, uh, with, um, at, with it in Egerton town, because like I said, Miss Piggy got on the, fr Aunt Piggy got on the first train smoking. So she went on back to Boston. So, uh, like I said, it was a decent episode. We got a lot more information. I was glad to see Quincy. I was glad. Oh, I know what I missed. I'm so sorry. Leia gets up out of her bed and she goes to, uh, and I can't remember when this happened. Was it after her? And no, it was before her and, uh, Raymond made up. They, she goes out to the, um, the hotel, and she's sitting in the parking lot, and I guess she was going to go in and see old Jack that wants Leia's box, but uh, she called Angela, and she told Angela what was going on, Angela talked her down, told her to go home, she needed to be honest and vulnerable with her husband, she does that, her and Raymond make up, they have sex, she allows um, Lauren to use her car, so the bungalow key is sitting there in the, in the cup holder, so, I don't know what reason. I, I guess maybe when I was a kid, I didn't care too much about stuff. I wasn't as curious as uh, Lauren is. But anyway, Lauren is curious. She's like, whose key is this? So, she calls the hotel and asks who's in Buffalo 3. And the lady on the thing said, well, that's Jack Sloan's room. And he's not in right now. Baby, you should have seen Lauren's face. Lauren's face was like, huh? Because remember, Lauren saw her mother kiss Jack. But anyway. I'm still sticking beside it. Uh, and so we will see you all next week. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know how you felt about this episode. Was there a particular character that uh, uh, chapped your hide or made you feel good? Give it down to me in the comments, and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye -bye. <laughs>